Matty, Katie, seven point six. Uh, let's talk some tech with Matthew Dickerson. Morning. Yeah, good morning. Love to talk tech. Love to talk tech, Andrew. I know this is a big deal, Matt, because it's been oh, geez, the PlayStation Four now has to be at least three or four years old. But uh, this is going to be the hot new PS Five. Exactly right. And it's you, you know it's going to be a hot item when here we are in June talking about a product that's not even going to be available for about six months. And as you said, end of the year, Christmas is obviously the target date they've got for it. But PlayStation, the concept, the console, if you like, is big business. Mm. PlayStation and Xbox continually fight it out for the number one console. But of course, not only have consoles become more and more popular, but COVID-19 meant that everyone's sitting around at home. What do we do? What do we do? So the usage of consoles went through the roof. So there is actually a bit more interest in the launch of a, a new console, albeit six months away, than normally because people are right into their PlayStations at the moment. And, and they've been looking at some of the games. And, and I love some of the games that are being played at the moment. Some old classics that people would know are going to be released new versions for the PlayStation 5. And if you think of Grand Theft Auto, most people have heard of that. It's supposedly the most successful piece of media of all time. 120 million copies have sold of that particular game since it launched back in 2013. So obviously that's going to be launched there. Gran Turismo, Ratchet and Clank. That's going to be a new one coming out. And I like Ratchet and Clank. And it was only about two days ago I was playing Ratchet and Clank with my son, an older version, obviously not the PlayStation 5 version. So that's a, a really popular one that'll be coming out in PlayStation 5. So a lot to look forward to if you're into gaming just a little bit or a lot when it comes towards the end of this year. I'm still rocking my PS1. My <laughs> PlayStation 1 still goes, seriously. My Gran Turismo, Matt, I had a mate of mine who cracked it for me one day, and I have like a gazillion dollars on it. He said, you will never run out of money. And seriously, I still have like 998 trillion dollars or something in it. It, it is it is. Awesome, but I I love I, I used to love a bit of gaming back in the day. I'm excited about a new Gran Turismo, but it's kind of really weird. The KFC have kind of been trolling Sony uh, during the PS5 launch. They have been. So there's an announcement by Sony. This is fantastic. Lots of hype. So KFC didn't want to be outdone. So KFC said that they're releasing a game console as well. And it sounds like a great game console. Uh, it, it basically is uh, cross-platform compatible, so you can run any games on it, PlayStation games or Xbox games or who knows, whatever game. So it sounded fantastic. It sounded like it was a great price. Everything sounded fantastic about it until you got to the little part that might have been a little bit of a giveaway. So they talked about when, you've, when you're sick of gaming and you, you just need a little bit of a break, then you can go to the, uh, the, the device and go to the chicken chamber. And you think, what's the chicken chamber? So that's the chamber inside the console that's there grilling your chicken up ready for when you want to have a bit of a break. And, and that was the final thing that people went, hold on a second, I'm not sure this one's real. So anyway, KFC gaming is a big thing. There's lots of followers on Twitter, lots of people having some fun with this particular one. But I don't think you'll see this in a KFC store anywhere sometime soon. Karen, I'd love to play the all new chicken run. <laughs> I can see lots of things. I can see lots of people, lots of gamers saying, a chicken chamber, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. So you imagine all the nerds out there that are sitting there on the couch playing this. Oh, man, if I can get chicken through that console, my life would be complete. <laughs> that's right. The only thing I thought about was you can have food, you can probably have a few drinks come through it, but the toilet, that was the only part I thought, how do you get ta take yeah. care of that one? So if you want to game constantly for 24 hours, you've got food, you've got gaming. Oh, I don't know about the toilet, though. So maybe someone can think about that one. Yeah, no, I did it once where I gamed all night when I first got my PlayStation. I was playing Colin McRae Rally. This is going to take it back. And seriously, I played. I kept going, I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to turn it off. It got to about quarter past three, I think. And I had to be up at five for a breakfast shift. And let's just say it was a very messy morning, that one. <laughs> uh, if you went that long, you must have just gone straight through. Who cares about an hour and a half sleep? Yeah, I know, right? I don't think I slept because I kept laying in bed going, finally I hit that turn a bit better. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it does get you a bit hyped up when you're trying to get through something. The main thing, the main problem I have is my son plays a lot more than I do, so I'm always trying to beat him, mm. and he normally gives me about a 10 to 1 ratio. You can have 10 goes at this one, Dad, and I'll have one go, and, and that's what yeah. I need to even get close to him is about 10 times the amount of time doing it. 
Yeah, no, I don't play with my nephews anymore because of that fact. They're just, yeah, the 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 trash talking is just beyond me now. I'm like, I don't care anymore. You just play on your own. <laughs> now, this is interesting. we got a spare 15K around, Matt. Apparently, you can have a celebrity on your Zoom call. Man, what do you think you'd pay for a celebrity? I mean, the, the, the whole idea of this concept initially was that you could get a shout out from a celebrity. So you could get a, a celebrity to say, mm. hey, Andrew, how are you going today? And they were charging $400 US for that privilege. So they've taken it a step further with people being in, in lockdown and mm. some of these celebrities not being able to buy their latest diamond ring on a daily basis. I'm not sure what they, they couldn't particularly achieve. But they've got to the point now where you can do a Zoom call. But, but what do you reckon it would cost for a Zoom call for 10 minutes? Ten minutes, it wouldn't be fifteen k. I tell you that right now. I don't know. I assume it'd be a couple of thousand bucks. You'd have to chip in something. I mean, it's a celebrity. Yeah, it is a celebrity, and you hit the nail on the head the first time. Fifteen thousand dollars US to have a Zoom yeah. call with, and not every celebrity signed up to this. Obviously, some celebrities are, some aren't. But if you've got your with your favourite celebrity, and it's going to cost you about 15 grand. So you really want to be a pretty big fan of them. And uh, you've got people like skateboarder Tony Hawk. He doesn't charge quite that much, but Jeremy Piven, he charges that much. And I don't think Jeremy's actually done a lot. I mean, I've seen Jeremy in a few different shows, but it's not yeah. like he's superstar material, but 15 grand. And, and maybe that's part of the point. Maybe you can't get superstars on there. They're, they're thinking it's a bit below them. But so, you know, Brett Favre, he charges $5,000. So there's a few there that are celebrities, but 15 grand is the most anyone's charging at the moment, and that's Jeremy Piven. But uh, look out for a few more out there. I love the idea. I love the concept. I just don't like the $15,000 idea. Yeah. No, I don't. Apparently, you can just get on Instagram, Matt, and uh, message Hamish Blake, and he'll just do it for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Even if you don't want him to come and tune in, he'll do it for you as well. I know, I know. He actually, he actually gate crashed a, an Air Force flight meeting, and he actually got in trouble. And the guy that actually messaged him ended up getting suspended as well. Well, I was going to say, I reckon it'd be more <laughs> the people. A bad day at work. Yeah, the people giving out the details would be the ones in more trouble, especially if you're in the Air Force. Hey, we'll just share out these confidential meeting notes, and oh, so my Russian friends might tune in. Yeah. Uh, oh, Sergey is joining us today. Yeah, yeah that's right. uh, the the government app, Matt. It's caused uh, controversy everywhere. But um, look, <laughs> the health department haven't even used it yet. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? All the controversy around the coronavirus app, all of the discussion around privacy and a whole range of things. So there's a lot of hype about it. They were trying to get to their 40%, which, which I always said from the beginning was going to be dreaming about it. And, of course, they didn't get anywhere near that. But, yeah, basically they haven't really used it. So I don't know if they needed to worry about it too much. I mean, the Prime Minister was carrying on a bit saying, if you want to get back to the pubs, you better download the app. And so we haven't quite downloaded the app, but we seem to be back at the pubs, not at full volume yet, but getting back there. But basically we've had a few cases of it being used. So New South Wales Health, for example, they've used it 10 times so far. So not that there's millions of cases in New South Wales, but 10 cases in New South Wales. And in, in fact, across the entire nation, the app's only been used for 30 coronavirus cases. So, you know, there's been hundreds of new cases that have been detected since the software was launched back in April, but it's only been New South Wales and Victoria really that have used it, Victoria 18 cases, but other states such as Queensland, WA, South Australia, the Northern Territory, even in Canberra, it hasn't been used at all. So, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of I suppose, hype around it, but not really much result in terms of usage. The, the app, which I thought was actually quite a reasonable price for it, cost $1.5 million, but for something that's only been used 30 times, it's not really a great cost <laughs> per usage. Are you serious? Yeah, and, and, it costs a million dollars to develop that. One and a half million dollars, yeah. Oh, one and a half, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was requ I was inquiring about an app the other day for the radio station. They were going to charge me two and a half thousand dollars. Maybe I should put my app developer in contact with the government and they could have kind of worked something out. Tell him, uh, tell him to ring Scott Morrison and, and five grand, he can double his money and, uh, and away he goes. But I know, right? <laughs> in, in real terms, I thought for what they were trying to do with that app, 
and the development time frame they had. One and a half million doesn't seem ridiculous for that. But one of the frustrations I had at the time was that Google and Apple were getting together, which is very unusual for those two companies to get together, and developing mm. an app that you could basically just tap into. But many governments around the world, including our government, said, no, 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 we'll do our own app rather than yeah. use two huge multinational companies who would have all the development resources internally, and I don't think they were going to charge one and a half million. Yeah, no, seriously. ScoMo, ring me. I'll uh, I'll hook it up for you. Seriously, I'll, I'll, I'll do it for a cool mill. Get your people I'm, to talk to I'm his pocketing. people. Yeah, no, seriously. If I can come out of this with 900 and lots of dollars, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a great... But you know what? It, at the end of the day, Matt, I, I feel comfortable that we have it, and, and I think it's a very positive thing that we haven't used it. Well, but now with all these protesters going out and doing all this this rubbish i think if they have it on them then it's a, it's a positive thing i think yeah you're right and and so there is that confidence in it but the problem is that if it's not being used it's not being used not because it doesn't work but because not enough people have downloaded it and that's the big issue so again they were aiming for that 40 percent given the fact singapore only ever got to 20 percent i was never confident we get to 40 percent and and we we've only just started a scratch getting close to that 20% and I think the general opinion is that if you're only getting 20% of the population who are using it, it's just not effective.